system when I started it was quite small ish not many things happened or at, it might be the case that I wasn't deep enough in the ecosystem so I, I just didn't see those events and and stuff but but I think that it has grown quite a bit and for example tribe I think was born during this previous two years of time I think at least in Tampere it has grown quite a bit Do you think that it is worth starting a business in Tampere or should everybody do it in Helsinki? It depends on so many different factors. Whether people of your team are living has has an effect, of course. People can move to other cities, of course, but they might have their families to bring with and so on. So there's so, so many different factors. I I wouldn't say that that Helsinki is the only place. Since your startup is quite young, mm-hmm. you probably remember, was it difficult to start a business in Finland? No, I think it was quite easy. The founding documents and the process with all the bureaucracy and stuff, it was lighter than I thought, at least. People told me that you know, it's a heavy process and blah, 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 but It was quite straightforward and easy and there's also quite a bit help from the government or the municipal authorities, like the Ensimetri in Tampere, the municipal or is it governmental agency who helps with the very first mm-hmm. phases of uh, starting a company. So Generally, I got curious. I don't think we've ever talked with anyone during Tribecast about it. What is the first step to open a business in Finland? Like very you very technical. To, What do you do? You have to register in it in these uh, different registers, uh, official registers. And for those, you need some like I don't know what's it called in English, but founding papers or okay. whatever. So you have to submit those there. And if you want to have this uh, startiraha, which is like the first subsidy, personal subsidy for entrepreneurs then you also have to go through with all these uh, business plans and stuff mm-hmm. at the very beginning, which are very important to, to do anyway. So it's good good to do those thoroughly right at the very beginning. Okay. And in your opinion, what is the main key to success for a startup in Finland nowadays? And the, well, first of all, the product, customer need fit is obviously the most important thing that's That's essential. And everyone says that uh, the team is important. And I've seen seen it myself in many cases, not in our companies, but in our company, but in others that it surely is very important if you don't have uh, that kind of a good communication environment. And, and so, so it's, I think that for every human relationship, it's important to have this very good communication environment and that's why I think it's the very important for startup startups too. But in Finland especially I think that there's the problem of people, Finnish people being let's say too humble or something like that or intro introvert or something like this. We are not bold enough I would say that we are not bold enough in marketing, in sales situations And that is a really big problem, I think, because uh, if you are not able to convince the other side, then <laughs> who would buy your product or who would give you funding? Or So I think that's like a Finnish thing, problem. Speaking of team, is your team Finnish only or do you have internationals? The founders, are, we all are Finnish, but we have had some international uh, interns. All right. Do you generally believe in the necessity of diversity when starting your own business? Because here I had two polarizing opinions. One group of people say that it's better when a team is diverse, so people share their ideas, come up with the crazy solutions and always get it going. And the other part of my interviews, they say like, yeah, it's better when all the people are from the same culture, so they have this better understanding of one another Mm -hmm. and then when the team is big enough then they can have someone who's not from the same culture so yeah i see both of the point of views personally i think that diversity helps you as you said to bring up all the different points of views also maybe bring some new ways of doing things Mm -hmm. to the table and and so on but I must say that it also, of course, it brings 
difficulties if you don't understand the other culture that well and the the cultures don't understand each other so it also if you have a lots of diversity in your company in your team then i sh- should say that you would also have to put lots of emphasis on the communications and like this kind of like people stuff so yeah i would say you you need diversity or at least it's good and but you need to manage it well One more issue I would like to talk about is that I know that you were one of the organizers of this recent new project, which is a talk show, which is held on tribe premises. Could you say a few words about that one? Yes, it started with the passion of few people on social entrepreneurship, uh, Kimmo Hokkanen, me and Tommi Uitti from Tribe slash Business Tampere. We were all Discussing about it, uh, Kimo brought it up and we discussed about it and we agreed that there's not uh, events of this kind in Tampere and very few in Finland too. So all of us, we want to promote the how to do good with business, how to tackle societal problems with business. That's uh, something I think that hasn't been discussed much enough at least in Finland and it has a great opportunity to make a real impact in the world so yeah we started organizing it by ourselves three of us three individuals then we talked with uh, U campus Y campus or how do you pronounce it in English (laughs) U campus and from the university and Shangri-La from the University Shangri-La is a student organization for responsible business students, which I have studied myself and actually I'm one of the co-founders of Shangri-La also. Yeah, they joined in, Y Campus joined in, Tribe was in, of course, Ehtaraha, which is a Kimmos organization. And so we then joined the forces and made the concept we decided the concept should be a talk show because talk show is easy to it's easy to join in so you don't have to hear lectures we had a couple of speeches speakers there and beer and kombucha so it's like a low level easy to join happening but the topic is important so that's the concept we came up with and it was a success i think it was and actually you can hear interviews with two of the speakers of the last week's talk show um Mm. in the episode nine and do you want to make a teaser because i know that you plan to do it again like a full-size project do you want to make some kind of a teaser or advertisement of who will be your next speakers uh we don't know about the next speakers yet but uh, we will keep the concept same so we had this talking session first and then we had like this world cafe thing where people got to speak about their own thoughts on the subject so we will keep the concept pretty much the same i think of course some improvements will be made i don't know about the speakers yet but we would probably want to have like some corporate level speakers too because now we had like small and medium-sized companies, representatives from these companies. And so I would personally like to see some corporate-level speakers there next time. Thank you very much, Tobias, for being with us. This was Tribecast, episode 10, and my name is Marina. I'm grateful to everybody who listens, likes, comments and provides Tribecast with feedback and inspiration. By the way, whom would you like to be interviewed next week? Please leave your comments on our social media and let's do some more cool stuff together. And for now, I wish you a great weekend. Stay warm and tuned.